Hello, e-people. Some clients of mine, myself, and maybe you, have built mappings that at a later date turned out to be not suitable for search requirements. Now, when this happens, fixes can require anything from adding a new field or a new analyzer and re-indexing to building a completely new mapping from scratch and re-indexing the data from the source of truth. Now, this doesn't happen with every Elasticsearch use case. If you're using it for observability or security data, then mappings will usually be specified by the agent gathering the data. When you're extracting the data from one source and moving it into Elasticsearch, however, you need to create the index mapping yourself. Now, I built an index mapping that doesn't allow for a query that I want to run, and I thought it would be good to show the problem and give a couple of different solutions. I created a data set that's effectively a glorified survey. Users answer questions based on how much they agree with the statement, from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And we analyze the results based on the percentage of users who gave one of the two answers indicating agreement. For example, if you selected either agree or strongly agree to the question, I have the tools I need to consistently do my job well, then you agree with that statement. If you selected either strongly disagree, disagree or neither agree nor disagree, then you don't agree with it. Within your team, if you and two of your colleagues agreed and three other colleagues didn't, then half of you agreed, giving your team a score for that question of 50%. Question responses are recorded in a relational database, transformed using a Python script and stored in an Elasticsearch index. Now this is what the index mapping looks like. The key parts of the mapping are the question that was answered, the answer to that question, and an indication of whether or not that answer indicates agreement, frequently called favorability. There's a bunch of other data here that's not relevant, so I'll skip that for now. Now this mapping works great for ingest. It's fairly small, and I can use a strict mapping to save the overhead associated with the dynamic mapping. And in an ideal world, the documents are immutable. There shouldn't be any need to update the documents after they've been written to the index. Now using this mapping, I can calculate question scores by filtering the responses to just the ones I want and using an aggregation. Here's how I would find the score for question 10. Now this looks complicated, but the main parts are the terms aggregation to find the number of favorable and unfavorable answers and the bucket script pipeline aggregation, which takes those two counts and calculates a percentage score. While this mapping has some strengths, it does have some weaknesses. One is that I need to index a document for every answer each user gives. If there are 40 questions in the survey and all of them require an answer, that's 40 documents per user. The documents will be quick to index, but there will be a lot of them. Another issue, and the one I want to focus on, is the queries I'm not able to run using this mapping. I tried to run a type of query that made me realize this model isn't completely suitable. Now, this is the information need I had. Find the score for question 10, but only for users who have given a favorable answer for question five. I need to find the users who have given a favorable answer to question five, find their answers to question 10 and calculate the score. I denormalized the schema of the relational database a little to make this query less verbose for this example, but here are a couple of different ways to do this in SQL. Now, this is the simple way to do it using a nested select with an in clause. A more efficient way to do this, I think, is joining two queries from the same table. The problem is that this isn't something we can do in Elasticsearch. Each document represents a single answer from a user, and we're not able to filter those answers based on an answer to a different question by the same user. Elasticsearch doesn't have joins like this, and there's no equivalent functionality. Now, I've thought about how to get these results in Elasticsearch using this mapping, but there's simply no way to do it, at least in the current version of Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch teases that this could be possible with EQL, event query language, which does allow you to join two queries on a common field, but Elasticsearch only allows this when the documents are ordered by using sequences. 
Elasticsearch doesn't support basic joins yet, only sequences. The questions happen to be in numerical order at the moment, but that's only because it's synthetic data. I can't rely on question order. But here's an example of using a sequence in case you're interested. Now that only finds the documents too. I don't think we're able to use aggregations with EQL. This functionality may be available in the future, but it's still not an ideal solution. Having to learn a whole nother query language just for one specific query is a bit off-putting. So what are the alternatives? If there's no way to run this query with the current mapping, how can we change the mapping to better suit the queries that we want to run? There are options, but none of them are ideal. We need to pivot the data. Instead of having one document per response, we want to have one document per user. Each document will then contain all the responses from that user and some extra metadata. We'll then be able to query on multiple fields in the document and run aggregations. There's still different strategies for doing this. One way is to have a field per question response, holding just the answer that the user provided for each question. Field names could follow a convention, allowing us to use dynamic templates with some level of control. Here's a different mapping with that idea. Now this approach will work, but look at the mapping after the data has been loaded. There are 33 questions in the survey, which end up creating 132 fields. This isn't a huge issue at this stage, but it could easily get horribly out of hand if we have more questions in the future. Now here's how I can run the previously impossible query with this new mapping. Another problem with this sort of mapping is that changing a single answer requires updating all fields relevant to that answer. Update operations aren't ideal, but we'd have to use them for this mapping unless we completely re-index the entire document every time. A different technique is to use an array of nested documents. Now, nested documents behave differently to an array of simple objects. They're not flattened, so we're able to query and aggregate them individually. We have a single document per user, but create one nested document per question response, each with lots of information about the answer. Using nested documents, we'd also be able to maintain a strict mapping on the main document and the nested document, keeping the field count down. This is what the mapping for the nested document approach would look like. One huge issue with this is how the data is modified. If we need to record a new answer for a user, we can't just add that single answer to the user's document. We need to completely rebuild the entire document from scratch the user's data and all their answers. Storing the data this way could mean that we only choose to create a new document once the user has answered all the questions instead of answering an individual question. There is some merit to doing that though. We might not want to count a user's answers until they've answered all the questions, effectively finishing the survey. So saving them all at the end once they've completed the survey might be a valid business case. Queries and aggregations on nested documents are also a bit of a pain to write and can perform poorly. Here's the query we'd need to get the data we're after. It's very similar to the original aggregation, but with nested directives for some of the queries and aggregations. I can't claim to have written that off the top of my head. I got pretty far with it, but it hit an issue because of needing to filter down the nested documents to just those for question 10. I used a filter aggregation originally, but it needs to be a multi-bucket aggregation for the bucket script pipeline aggregation to work. I changed the filter to filters and it was fine after that. Now those are the two alternatives that I came up with. Which is the best? It depends. Each mapping is the same data, just being projected differently, in different costumes if you like. Some are suitable for certain occasions, but others will end up in you not being invited back. Most things in life have trade-offs, and Elasticsearch mappings are no exception. Balancing tidy, strict, manageable mappings against easy-to-write, easy-to-read, and quick-to-run queries, or technical correctness against business requirements, is something you'll need to do when you're building your own mappings. I've mentioned in other videos that it's okay to store the same data in multiple indices and use whichever is the most appropriate for the user's information need. And this could be one of those occasions. And by the way, thanks for getting this far in the video. So here's another interesting aspect of this mapping. 
You probably noticed the fields called member of BUs and member of BUIDs. The users in this survey are in business units or teams inside a company's organization hierarchy. Now, it's hierarchical data, meaning I'm able to use either of those fields to get scores for any team in the organization using aggregations. There are different strategies for storing and querying hierarchical data too, so let me know if you want to hear more about that. I'd love to hear if you want to know more about mappings, or if you've got any horror stories about building or using terrible mappings in Elasticsearch. Let me know in the comments. And until next time, have fun and cheerio.